the first thing I'd say is um, boards can play a role in being really kind of selective and prioritizing really well. And that might involve some hard decisions, might involve saying no, uh, might involve maybe even getting rid of some sacred cows. You know, maybe there's kind of uh, some projects that a lot of people have invested in, but if they're not delivering the value that, that, that they need to, um, then boards should be should be opening up that conversation. The next thing I'd say um, is I think it's really important when you're looking at technology investments to have a balanced portfolio. So that means um, having the right balance between keeping the light on and investing in improvements, uh, the right balance between things that are going to um, benefit you in the short term but also things that are going to be important for the long term. And I think you need to kind of figure out like how much patience do you have as an organization? Um, true transformation takes time. It takes probably a generation uh, to, to, to fully realize all the benefits. So if you're looking for technology to, for kind of, you know, quick wins, uh, there may be some, but the true benefits of technology come through people changing the way that they work and, and kind of learning to adapt to that technology and the, and the technology adapting to them. So um, like, make sure you have that kind of balance in mind between you know, the short term and the long term. Conversations about interop interoperability have a tendency to get very technical very quickly. Um, but I think the biggest thing that boards need to understand about interoperability is that it's fundamentally a human challenge. It's not a technical challenge per se. I think that, you know, we have ways of moving data between systems. That's not the core issue. The core issue is that those systems are often speaking completely different languages. And that's ultimately because of humans. And, and there's two reasons for that. Number one is, there is no single way of doing medicine. So even in the same hospital, you probably have, even in the same department, you probably got uh, clinicians who think differently about medicine and maybe use different terminology or maybe use different practice and different ways of, um, uh, different ways of, uh, uh, of managing care. The second human challenge, I think, is that ultimately good interoperability relies on clinicians inputting and coding data and these are clinicians that have other things to do so they are um you know they they're trying to care for patients they are trying to do a million things at once they are uh you know trying to prescribe they're trying to um administer tests at the same time as giving the system what it needs so I think fundamentally there's a kind of practical or like a usability challenge there with our systems, which is how can we make sure we're getting the, you know, enough information coded in the right way, structured in the right way, without getting in the way of clinicians. Because if we're going to do that, then, you know, if, we, if you're forcing a clinician to spend, you know, five minutes, like looking up the exact code that they need to, code something out and, and and kind of going through a really messy workflow in a system they're just not going to do it or if or they're going to take some shortcuts and then ultimately you'll end up with data that isn't uh isn't of a very high quality and it's not gonna you're not going to meet the kind of interoperability challenge there so um what i'd say to boards is like understand these kind of human challenges around the interoperability and find ways for, um, you know, your technical experts and your clinical experts to come together. Because I, I don't think that either can solve the problem on their own. This is this is really like where we need that that kind of multidisciplinary approach, uh, where people who understand computers and people who understand medicine get together um, and try and solve this problem.